Before silica gel, registrars around the globe were helpless to prevent the detrimental effects of humidity on their most prized artifacts. Precious documents under the watchful eye of conservators soon became a soggy mess with no hope of recovery. So long, Magna Carta, you're all wet! In 1919, Professor Walter A. Patrick patented synthetic silica gel. In World War I, silica gel was used to absorb vapors and gases in gas mask containers. And in World War II, it was indispensable for keeping penicillin dry. Today, it is commonly encountered in everyday life as beads packed in semi-permeable plastics to control local humidity. What's that in your handbag? Why, it's silica gel, of course! But did you know that after absorbing moisture, silica gel, or silicone dioxide, should be treated for thermal desorption? Keep it dry, says the wise guy. Coarse poured silica gel should be placed in a baking furnace to rise to 500 to 600 degrees, and the granules will take on a white or yellow brown hue after 6 to 8 hours. When drying and regenerating silica gel, temperatures should be raised gradually in order not to cause breaking of gel granules and recycle rate reduction owing to drastic drying. Easy does it, Betty Crocker. All good things come to those who wait, and silica gel is no exception. Why not use that drying time to catch up on the world outside? Learn a skill, or even play a game. Before you know it, your silicone dioxide will be high and dry. Looks delicious, doesn't it? Hot out of the oven, but I wouldn't do that if I were you. Silica gel will not only have a drying effect on your skin, it can contain cobalt chloride, and that's not part of a healthy registrar's diet. Time for snacking later. Right now, it's time to use that regenerated silica gel in the way modern science has intended. Keeping those traveling artifacts nice and dry for the curious <laughs> eyes of museum visitors everywhere. So long, humidity, and hello, silica gel!